Welcome to the Motivated Martial Arts Podcast. Your hosts, Jackson White and Gavin Cook, have been friends and Taekwondo training partners for over 40 years. This podcast will bring you a mixture of their life stories, martial arts, and business experiences to motivate you in life and throughout your martial arts journey. Adding in a mixture of inspiring interviews and some of the best traditional martial artists around today. So over to your hosts, the Motivated Martial Artists. Welcome to the Motivated Martial Artists podcast with me, Gavin Cook. And me, Jackson White. And this morning, we've got Cash the Flash Gill on the show. So we're super excited to have Cash on. Cash is another one of those old legends from back in, back in yesteryear, full-time world kickboxing champion. And um, he's graced our scenes over the years in all the freestyle circuits and stuff like that back in those days. So we're super excited to get, to get Cash on the show. Hello, Cash. Hi guys, how are you? Everything yeah, good? Good. Chris. Good, to, good to get you on. Bruce, yeah, really good, thank you. Good to be here. Thank so I'm you. always looking, I'm always looking enough, Kath, to ask the, uh, the first question to our guests. And, you know, our, our listeners, you know, some will know you because, you know, you're immensely famous in the, uh, in the full contact uh, kickboxing karate world. Uh, others may not, but actually we're going to bring them, uh, those listeners into you. But can you give them a bit of a, a backstory? Give us a bit of a, an insight into your upbringing, where you grew up, and how you got into martial arts. Yeah, I can do that, yeah. Well, I'm actually celebrating 40 years this year. So uh, going back to 1980, rewind, 1980, um, I spent a lot of time in Hansworth Park. Uh, Hansworth is famous for the wrong reasons. You know, back in the days, it was a rough area, you know. There was a lot of the marches, the BMP, and the Hansworth riots back in the 80s. Yeah. Yeah. So we had a lot of um, distractions going around, you know, growing up in that areas. So we needed to find something and spend a lot of time in Hamza's Park. Um, very sporty, very active. I like to play a lot of football, a lot of tennis, like cricket, any sport really. Running around the park. I was always a fit kid. And the one day, walking to Hamza's Park, there's a Hamza's Carnival, very famous. You know, they have all the bands there. Everyone in Hamza, they were all around Birmingham or London, everyone came down. And there was actually a ring set up in the park. And obviously, being a, a boxing fan, watching Muhammad Ali fights with my father, I was only a young kid. Growing up, I was in the ring, and uh, that particular day, I thought it was going to be a big fight there. And it was actually Howard Brown and Godfrey Butler, two legends of kickboxing, doing yeah. a demonstration. And when I seen this demonstration, doing all the jumping kicks, the spinning kicks, the, that looks, I'd never seen any experience of, of kickboxing before. And a couple of days later, they put up a sign at the Leisure Centre in Hansworth, which is walking distance from my house. So they're going to be starting a session off. Uh, so I went down to that session, walked in. That was it. My life changed and absolutely enjoyed it, loved it. I told Howard, you know, I'd love to be a world champion one day like, like himself. I love the demo. I became addicted. And ever since that day, that's what I've been doing. How's that for a bit of an intro? Yeah, yeah. That's yeah, that's, that's spot on. So that's talk us so so talk us through how you felt when you walked into that 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 gym on that that first session then you know because obviously I know it's um you know myself and Jackson are instructors and um like full time instructors and you know when you think about um how you felt when you were a youngster when you first walked into that gym you know you can still most people can quite vividly remember it can't they the smell of it the feel of it everything well it was a leisure center so it's like any other leisure center but you know actual instruction from howard howard is very very good technical coach godfrey butler is the rough and ready you know rough you up we were like in at the deep end it wasn't like it is now health and safety after about five or six lessons we had health and safety what was health and safety <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah back in the 80s it was a bit like that so we just get the gloves on after about six sessions and howard and godfrey used to batter me it's from pillar to post most of the guys didn't come back <laughs> But I kept going back for more. So uh, I kept going back for more. They must have knew, you know, this kid's got a bit of talent. Obviously, being a, an Asian kid, there weren't many Asian kids in the sport then. And um, did you know I was the first Asian in the UK to become a world champion in the contact sport? They just done a documentary in Birmingham recently. Oh, okay. And they highlighted the okay. facts. Yeah. Brilliant. So that, 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 that's really, it's, it's really, that's in, actually quite inspiring that, you know, the, the city have taken the time to look back you know, at the time, you know, it really should have been promoted at the time yeah, and, and made more of it. But I suppose the society, the way it was back then, that wasn't the case. But actually for them to retrospectively go back and then and show that and highlight it now, I think that, that's, that's a good sign, isn't it? 
you know what they were doing? They were doing 100 facts about Birmingham and it was going right, right back, you know, hundreds of years to the William Shakespeare, the Alexander Fleming. And then all of a sudden, I pop up, I'm oh, cash to fact, four-time world champion. Did you know? Such and such. So it was, it was good. And obviously, it went to all the schools around Birmingham, 425 schools. So it's a good education for the youngsters to find out and the history. Yeah, definitely. So, um, so well, how, how important would you have said, you know, going, if you're thinking about your sort of your childhood um, times in martial arts, how important do you think it was um, to keeping you on the straight and narrow, basically growing up in those, growing up in those sort of parts? Well, the childhood we had was, you know, it was a great childhood, you know, always into sport, I mean, activity. Obviously, you see the kids of today, it's, it's all changed. It's not so much the kids have changed, society have changed. You know, you know, we have TV, media, paedophiles in the park, all that. So people, start, parents started protecting the kids to stop them going out. And we could see signs of obesity coming because, you know, the world's changed. But for me, myself, I took the right direction. You know, my father, I went to my father the one day and said, like, Dad, I've seen... I've seen a kickboxing, I'd love to have a go. My dad had a background of, of wrestling back in the Punjab from India where he, where he came from. So he quite encouraged me. He said, yeah, go down and have a go. And then obviously I had another father then, Howard Brown, who became a father figure because I was a young kid. And Howard yeah. took me under his wing. We also had Godfrey Butler, great coach. And then we had the links with Deb Barrett as well, which Jackson mentioned earlier. So I was lucky you know, to have some good mentors and some inspiration in my life. As well as that, I went on to train with Master Toddy and Master Ray as well. So yep. had some great, great life experiences with some good coaches. Okay. Did, 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 you ever, did you ever get involved with Ronnie? Ronnie Green. We had Ronnie Green on the show at the beginning when we first started the podcast. I fought on, on the bill with Ronnie Green. And I also fought with the White Tide World title a few times, which was being live to Thailand. So uh, I had a fight with a guy called Superman or Sad Sapar. Great fight. If anybody wants to watch it, it's, it's on YouTube. Okay. Uh, I wish I trained a bit harder for that. I also fought against John Hard from Thailand as well. So, but a lot of people don't know my background. I also done Thai boxing because I trained with Master Thai and Master Ed. I love the Thai fight. I wish I took it a bit more seriously now. Okay. Oh, that's interesting. So, talk us through the, the first time you stepped into a ring on a competitive bout. When, when was that? Well, really, if you, if you go back to, to my career, it started in 1984, four years after I got my black belt. Um, went into the ring and it must have lasted about 30 seconds. I've got a photograph from London, but this is where it comes in. My first fight was 30 seconds. My second fight, Howard's brother Edge pulled out of a fight against a Yugoslavia, um, which is now Croatia. He pulled out. So my second fight went into an international against Jewish Igor from Yugoslavia and I went to full five rounds. So I was, I was fit and I remember running on the Wednesday, the fight was on Saturday and I ran 10 miles on the Wednesday. When the fight was Saturday, no one else had drained, and I came in at 67 kilos. So, and I'm six foot three, you know, so yeah, I know, I know. probably, probably drowned, uh-huh. drained. <laughs> but, but back in them days, like I said, we were learning just by the day. My third fight, I went to Austria for the European Championships. Had a bad experience in Austria because what happened? One of the lads was uh, overweight, so they put me up, put me up a weight. I went up into the 76 category, which I was a 70 kilo fighter. Right. Uh, first fight, one second fight, I got knocked out clean, got put into hospital for a week. A lot of people don't know that, but that was a bad experience. And that could have either made me or break me, luckily. Yeah, no, it's definitely. After a week in hospital. Certainly, you know, from a, I think you can, you can get away, can't you, fighting up a weight in a, in a continuous environment where, you know, actually you're not getting knocked out. But as soon, soon as you go into a full contact environment, you go up a weight, I mean, six kilograms, no doubt your fight, fighter was at the top of his weight and you were probably just on your, the bottom of yours. Well, so, I was you know, really just the weight disparity. Yeah, 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 exactly. Third, I wasn't really experienced enough to deal with it. And I, I was actually knocked out clean and carried out on a stretcher. So when you look back at it, you know, I could never, might not have never woke up. I was very lucky. Luckily, I was in good shape. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, so, they're, they're, they're sort of defining moments. You certainly find out those weights. Sorry, Jack. I said, like, they're sort of defining moments, aren't you, in your, in your career? You know, because a lot of people would never have gone back from that. I had a run in my career where I was, I was losing. I had a loss and a loss and a loss because, you know, at the deep end, you put me up, in, put me up a weight, went the distance, fighting away from home. But what I'd done then, I went back to the gym and I had to spend hours working on my right hand. You know what I'd say? David Beckham used to work on his free kicks. Yeah. I used to work on my right hand over and over again. It was called the Cobra Punch, in and out. And that, what made me a knockout fighter. After that, I was knocking him out. I remember hitting a guy in London and I seen for the first time his eyes spinning in front of me. Whoa, it's a jackpot. Went for the finish. <laughs> <laughs> so just, just talk us about that. So you know, it's, it's quite, it's quite interesting. We talk a lot, to a lot, 
a lot of athletes, martial artists, business coaches. And the, the, the word failure, I think, you know, we, we have a, a lot of people have a fear of the word failure, in, particularly in this country. But obviously you've taken those failures, which are the losses, and, you know, it's, you know, it's part of the development. We see it as failure as a great thing because it, it, might, it benchmarks you where you are and it gives you something to learn from. So if you fail at something, you can learn from it so you don't repeat that failure. So what did, you know, losing those fights, what did that teach you? You, you mentioned there about your right hand. How did, you, how did you deal with that? Did you think, right, I've got to get better or, or you know, I'm not sure this is for me? How, how, how did it affect you? Um, it did. Oh, you know, I hate losing. I was a bad loser. I would go home yep. and I would not talk for a few days and I was like, I was down, down. Like, but what it done, I think it's good to have losses on your record because it does make you a better fighter. I think it's all yep. part of the learning process. You know, when you see a guy with like 15 fights, 15 wins, you think to yourself, you know what? Or you've got 50 fights, 50 wins. You look at it and you go, well, I wonder who's being fighting against. You, when you look at my record, you might think, oh, he's had 16, 17 losses. Yep. But you know, when you go away from home as well, you're up against mm. everything. And if you don't knock them out, you ain't going to get it, even if you knock them down twice. But you can inspire to make, train harder. And what it done for me, it did make me go back to the drawing board a lot of the time, go back to the basics. And when you keep your basics with you, I don't think you can go wrong too much. So I always say, you know, keep grounded. Always keep sticking to the basics. Yeah. So the great, last great, thing, sorry, great, great example of that was uh, Prince Nazim, wasn't it? And Prince Nazim was like... Um, I can't remember what he was in something like 25 and 0 or something like that. And his first first time he got beat, that was it. It was almost almost game over, wasn't it? It was, yeah. He, he was didn't see him again. Of, yeah. It was top of the game. When he fought Barrera, it was, it was a different story, yeah. Yeah. Obviously, yeah. I followed a lot of the boxing fights as well back in the day. I don't follow as much religiously now, but I used to be a big boxing fan as well. Mm-hmm. So the other sports I follow, I follow a lot of football as well. My kids, you know, I follow Chelsea. I was actually Aston Villa football fan. I didn't go down to the matches a lot, but I used to do half-time entertainment, promoting the fights and all that kind of stuff. Okay. So I'd say I'm a hardcore Aston Villa football fan. Oh, good man. That yeah, makes when I do get a chance, I go down and support <laughs> them. Yeah, and we stay in the Premiership as well. Oh, no, yeah, it's great results at the end of the season. Yeah. yeah I'm looking forward to a new season. Just made a great signing uh, yesterday, didn't we? That's right, yeah. Yeah, yeah lad from Brentford. So that that'll be interesting. Records, club record signing as well, over a five-year right, yeah. five deal. Yeah, yeah looking, I'm looking forward to the new season starting this Saturday. It should be good. It's a shame about, you know, oh, you can't go down and watch them. But, but you know, the boys like fighting as well. You know, I don't know how they can fight with no audience. When I look at that, you I, know, know. I had to drive on the audience. I had to bring a band out with me, you know, entertainment blitz. So I think when you don't have an audience there, it must be difficult to perform. You know, let's have them on the TV and put the sound in the back. Yes, but yeah. I would hate to actually experience that myself. Yeah, because yeah, you change, so, you know, you so change I think based it, on who's in the who's in the audience, don't you? If you've got, you know, you, you see it all the time. You see fighters losing, then once the audience get behind them or they get someone backing them, they just change, don't they? Yeah, I've always said, you know, my dad's been been the biggest fan and he's always been in the audience. And if I lost, I would have got to beat him when I got home. <laughs> <laughs> so gotta make make sure I won when my dad was there. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, it almost sets, you know, particularly for the fighters, well, any competitive sport it sets the ground almost, it's, it's irrelevant, isn't it? It's a neutral ground. So the, the, the playing field, actually, there's no advantage for being home or away now. It's actually quite neutral, isn't it? It is, yeah. Yeah, but yeah. I'd hate to actually experience that. So it must be very yeah, difficult. Yeah, no, I don't like to yeah, lift to it. Okay. So talk us through your, your first world title then, uh, Cash. Yeah, my, my, I actually, um, I was dual world title, but we just couldn't get the promoter to put it on. Uh, I defended my European title, I think, three times. I kept going abroad, you know, I kept active, 10 rounders, I was stopping, I stopped one guy in the ninth, stopped one guy in the third, and then eventually a guy came, Paul Ingram, who became president of the WK, he was one of my students, he came down and WT, he became a big fan of mine, he went around some of the countries with me as well, so he said he'll promote it with Howard Brown, and they put the show on together in 1991, March the 30th, Aston Villa in Birmingham, against an Australian called Alex Toohey, we didn't know much about Alex Toohey, it was not like now, you can research him on the internet, because yeah, sure. Today we just hadn't even started then, you know, YouTube and all that wasn't around. So when Alex Tui came down, he was short, but he was heavily built, stocky. He had a good background in boxing. He trained with Sakat Pachindi, very famous Thai boxer. He was. He also fought Wilfred Benitez, great body puncher. Alex Tui, tell you what, he was one of the hardest leg kickers, and he could punch hard to the body. Luckily, he ran, you know, three, four. He was on top of me, but round six, I hit him. My right hand knocked him out. 
And when he got down, he got back up and then uh, I finished it off. Obviously, people can see that fight on YouTube. That first world title fight, you know, when I talk about my fights, that's the one I always yeah. talk about because it's a great memory. Sure. And sure. the second one wasn't far away. It was at the Birmingham NEC with 10,000 people there against Ronnie DeLeon at the martial arts world extravaganza. Everyone in the martial arts, you know, all the big stars, Ronnie Greens, all them guys were there. And even people from, from abroad, like the Don Wilson, Cynthia Rusra, Bill Wallace, all of them came to that show. So I won a stage to fight him, and that was against yeah. the Mexican. And I went the full 12 rounds there. Okay. I, think I, I think I remember that. That was probably, was it 90s, was it? Was that in the 90s? That was 1991. Leon Spinks and um, Joe Lewis were, were also fighting boxing versus kickboxing. Yeah, okay, brilliant. That was, that was an awesome event to be part of, for sure. It was amazing, yeah. There was another big event in 1995, which is a great big uh, Combat 95. I was up against Tim Isley there. I don't know if you remember that. That was a, a bit of a grudge match because Tim Isley obviously said he was the best in the UK. Cash Gill's been avoiding me. So I had nothing to lose. I said, Tim, oh, let's get it on there because it's such a big stage. We got in the ring and you know what? He got the better of me in the first round. But in the second round, good night, Tim. Tim the Terminator, it was all over. Knocked him out clean. <laughs> on his face. <laughs> What um what what did your what did your sort of training uh, regime used to look like then uh, then Cass when you were sort of you know really really into your prime you know training what's you know talk us through the sort of stuff that you used to do to get conditioned for these sort of events. Well, you know I'm a full time martial artist. When I left school, I went straight into the gym. It was like people always say, "What else have you done?" I've never done anything else. All I've done is train, and I used to train three or four times a day. I remember every day I used to do 12 rounds on the pads and it still brings back memories, you know, 12 rounds on the pads I'd be leading up to the fights and running, you know, 10 miles, 8 miles, 7 miles, 10 miles, 10 miles. I was, it was the fittest I've ever been and I, you know what, I sometimes miss them days. I still run every morning but I always think I'll never be as fit as I was because I was, I was like, you know, 110% fit and I was in great shape. Yeah. And I was very disciplined and dedicated to my sport and I trained really, really hard for, I'd say, 90% of my fights. And the thing is, it's, it's funny, isn't it? Because that feeling of being match fit, you know, you know, it's, it's a great feeling, isn't it? We know when you know that you, you know you're fit, you know you're ready to go, and you feel great in yourself, don't you? And I think as you, as you get older, and I'm speaking for myself here, you know, get, maybe get, get a little <laughs> Speak bit... Speak for yourself. Get, yeah, get a little bit... <laughs> chubby, like, don't me. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and I you... Think, I think what it does, it gives you good stead. You know, now I'm in my 50s. And I still feel, feel great, you know, I've got no, you know, people yeah. say, you any problem with your joints. I've got no problem with my joints. I've got no problem with my knees, no, no problem with my hands. I'm in good shape. My brain is still ticking quick. I'm still, reflexes are really quick, still sharp. So, and I still keep up my training. I think that keeps, keeps you young as well. Yeah. Keep, keep on the cold liver, yeah, on, the, on the cold liver roll tablets. That's the, that's the way. Yeah. I don't take them. I used to, but I don't really take any kind of tablets either. You know, like going back in the day, people say, would you have done anything different? I'll do everything the same. You know, we got all these protein shakes. I never took a protein shake in my life. I've never done any of that stuff. I don't know. Yeah, uh, I was, the hard way. I was going to ask you about nutrition. What, yeah, what were, you, what were you eating? Because, you know, certainly, you know, watching my dad, you know, cut down to weight and get to certain weights, you know, he would eat, drink a can of nutriment a day. And that'd be him. And he'd go out and do all his training and his working. But I think now with the, with the, with the, with the science that we have, nutrition, you know, you, you, can't out, you can't out train a good diet, can you? So nutrition no, you really I think, I think sports Do you think you fell lucky? Yeah, do you think you fell lucky with your nutrition? You were eating right and healthy anyway? No, definitely not. I did everything. I think it was right for me, but I was kind yeah. of starving myself, sitting in the sauna every day for half an hour. I was drained. I was dizzy. I, I tell you what, it was so hard, but, but it was all right. It worked for me. You, yeah. you know, I still kept my power and I was still knocking them out. So I was... Or even though I was drained, I think I watched this documentary once and they said the sign of a good athlete to always be tired. I thought, you know what, I must be doing something right because I'm always absolutely whacked. Always tired, yeah. no, I'm, I'm, I'm always knackered. I'm, I'm certainly not an athlete anymore. <laughs> <laughs> must be doing yeah. something wrong. <laughs> yeah, so, you know, like, you know, I always be a 10 stone 12, 10 stone 7, 11 stone. People would never believe the way, you know, when I went abroad, the way he's not. 70 kilos or 69 and I always made the weight I was very rarely over yeah. the weight so that was with good discipline you know people say about martial arts it, it is yeah I mean I, yeah, I'm exactly the same I sit at now 95 kilos uh, yeah. when I was fighting probably five years ago I'd be down to seven, under 76 uh, yeah. and I never want once not made my weight it's, it's, it's about having that personal discipline isn't it to me as a, as a fighter 
you know, the, the, the one thing you've got to be able to do is one first, it's, it's a stage, isn't it? The first stage is you've got to be able to hit your weight. If you can hit your weight, then you've got to be able to perform at that weight. Definitely, you know, to yeah. me, I mean, if I've you can't a, make I've that first few, gate, you're not going to perform at the second gate. Yeah, I've had a few bad experiences when I went to South Africa. Actually, I went over with Dad Barrett. We went there and um, I came in at just under 70 kilo, I think 70.5. That was the limit. I came just underneath. And the guy came in at 76 kilos, six yeah. kilos to every. So what me and Deb didn't do, we didn't go back to check if he had made the weight because they said, you know what, we're going we're to come back in six hours and check his weight again. It's been impossible. They said he made the weight, he made 70 kilos. And when we went 12 rounds then. Yeah, I think, you know, sometimes you've had bad experiences in your, in your career. That was one of the bad yeah, experiences. Yeah. Me and Deb didn't go back to check. And then, then the next day we went 12 rounds. I gave him a good beating as well. That was a Richard and Banana. That's on YouTube as well. And they gave him the decision. I was disappointed with that. You don't want to yeah, no, of that. course. I'm going to have one more fight and it's going to be with him. <laughs> <laughs> Are you going to get your gloves no, back on then, Cash? Yeah. Are you going to come back out of retirement? Never. I'm never coming. You know what? I've come out of a tough, tough sport and I've never come out of retirement now because you know what? I've made six world champions, you know, coaching. And I enjoy coaching the young kids. So I quite enjoy my life now. So, 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 what, so, what do you do to fill your day now? Like I say, I say, obviously teaching. Obviously, I just recently shut my full time gym because it, it was taking up all the time and effort. But what I do now, I, I do a bit more in the community. I do community runs. I do community in Hamza Park while while the lockdown's on. So I keep quite active, and I'm also doing an online academy called KTF Academy. That's going to be keep launching very, very soon. So that's going to be very good. I'm excited. I'm so excited about that. So what, so what sort of stuff have you put in the academy then? Is it drills? Is it, um, you know, is it the stuff that you, you know, training, training it's stuff? a bit of everything you can buy into it. You can, you can start off at a basic level and then you can come into, or you can even come and spend a whole week with me. Okay. And, you know, train three or four times a day and, and learn. How, see if you can keep up with it. You know, some people will be able to, some people won't be able to. So to buy into that, you've got to be a serious athlete. Sure, sure. So is it is it is it for a beginner level or an advanced level or do you or do you have a do you have like a cross section of all? It's for any level really. You can do it from beginner to advanced. If you can be a world champion or you can be an MMA fighter, you want to learn to improve your striking. Obviously, I'm very good at striking. I've never I don't really I'm not really a ground person. Even though I went to India and did coaching with the MMA, I kept away from the ground because it's not really my skill and I haven't really worked on that. I did bits and drabs, but I am a striker and. You know, we should all keep to our own things, what we're good at. Keep to yourself, of course, yeah. So talk, 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 again, our audience, I certainly didn't know you was you were doing some um, MMA in India. How did that come about? Just talk us through that. Um, the, the, the promoter, Bill Tassange, obviously ahead of me. And he said, you know, the let's get cash kill over, obviously being, being of Indian heritage. Mm -hmm. Went out there and they had everyone there, you know, all people from different countries, the Brazilians, the uh, Africans, uh, the Germans, uh, the French. That the Indians, Indians are really good at background and wrestling. But you know, when the Americans came, they went, oh, they've got a lot to learn. But it was a great experience at the different states, you know, they had um, Delhi, Goa, Gujarat. And I was loving the culture of the Punjab with Punjab background. And obviously, yeah, the first tournament in 2017. And you know who won it? The Punjab won it. We went on to win that. So, 2017, the first season, I was the coach of the, of the MMA. So, that's another one for my uh, CV. Mm -hmm. I had a great experience. Yeah, sure, I've, never been to, I've never been to India before, so what an experience, you know, after being going around the world. I got to spend yeah. six weeks, and I went with Howard Brown. We had six weeks. We had a fantastic time. And then I went the year after, 2018, went to Mumbai, and I had four weeks there as well. We didn't win it that time, but what an experience. And you know what? For the sport of MMA, it's exploded. It was Amir Khan and Bill Sandro partners who were promoting it. But they're not, they've had a year or two off now. I don't know what they're doing. I think they're spending more time on the boxing now. Mm -hmm. Okay, that sounds really interesting. Yeah, so, really how do you, how do you then? So, you no, know, we, we, we're coming out of the back end of COVID now, and you know, the certain club, a lot of clubs are closing down. We're having trouble with restrictions and local lockdowns, throwing people. In. How do you see martial arts, or and particularly your 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 sport, uh, contact karate, and kickboxing developing in the future? Well, with with the MMA, our sport is always going to be always going to be a strength, always going to be strong. With COVID, it's been very difficult. You know. It's, I'm thinking to myself now, bloody hell, I'm glad I've closed the gym because it must be very difficult, you know, go back, all the cleaning, doing all that, the COVID restrictions. Luckily, I train them in the park. But, you know, as time goes on, hopefully it's going gonna, it's gonna to calm down. But I think the sport of, of striking is always going to be strong and there's always going to be demand for it because it's all around body workout as well. Yeah. For men, women and children, I think, you know, we're going to be strong 
and it will keep growing. The only problem with martial arts we've had over the years is the unity. People haven't worked together. If we all work together, we could have we could have done it. You know, back in the nineties when I used to come on Sky Sports and Paul Ingram and put them shows on, we had a chance of making it. But the only problem was everybody wanted to be the kingpin. We had a chance and we didn't take it. Look at UFC, it's come along with organization, a little bit of money behind them. It's massive. Yeah. It's still good for our sport, but we did have a chance of getting Muay Thai kickboxing in the 90s, but we missed it. And once you missed it, that's it. Okay. Yeah, no, it's very true. But is it, is it not moving into the Olympic uh, demonstration Olympic sport? I don't know. You hear things. You hear things. I don't know how serious they're going to be. I'd love it to be. Yeah, yeah, I think yeah. The case. yeah Dev, Dev mentioned that, didn't he? Dev mentioned it when he was on our podcast. Yeah, so yeah, I think Dev, 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 when I we think, had him on, mentioned that. He's, he's I think Dev, Dev with Wacko, 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 are quite organised, you know, with all the amateur yeah. and the, that, that's what you need. You need an organisation that that, that that can do it. Whoever does it, it'll be great for the sport. Yeah, yeah, most did, definitely. We've we, we we seen a, it with uh, taekwondo, haven't we, Gavin? So the taekwondo in the Olympics. We've, yeah. seen, we've seen how it, how effective it can be. You know, it's not our preferred method of, of, of taekwondo or ITF, but you know, so for some of the top athletes, it gives them a real, it gives them a real platform. It gives and them look a, a how, fantastic look how platform. Taekwondo has grown. You know, every kid wants yeah. to do taekwondo now because yeah. it's an Olympic sport. Yeah. So if you get something in Olympics, yeah, exactly everybody that. wants to do it. It's amazing. Yeah. It's great. It's good. You know, for us, even though we're not we're not big fans of it because we prefer full contact. You know, but you said it's a great yeah. kicks and you get good coverage on the TV. And it's good for martial arts, no matter what, what sport it is, haven't it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah no, I'm, I'm, exactly that. And, you know... Well, we, we were talking, weren't we, Jackie, uh, like six months ago, sort of saying how, how great it would be to do... Jim, have you seen the, the World Combat League in the US? In the, the World Combat League? Is it Chuck Norris, isn't it? It's Chuck Norris, Jackie, yeah. that organises it, isn't it? I've heard of that, yeah. Yeah, something like that in the UK would be great where you could just get all the ITF fighters in there, the kickboxing fighters, you know, the, the Muay Thai, stick everyone in, in, in the circle. And uh, yes, see. Yes. It's, almost, yeah, it's, like, it's like a circle. It's all stand up. There's no groundwork in there, but it's full contact. Yeah. You know, you go off, go off the mat, you're out and you get your points and that. So, and if you knock them out, you, you knock them out. And so that'd, that'd, be, that'd be awesome. It's an aspiration. Yeah. Will we ever get there? Oh, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a high one to climb. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, you know, if you don't have a dream about something, it's never going to come to turn to reality, is it? You know, that's how exactly. all these things start. Yeah. The aspirations. Okay, so Cash, what you know, you 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 seem you know you you've achieved so much in in the world of martial arts, and you know, and now you're giving that back with your coaching and mentoring. What what motivates you in 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 life in general? What motivates you? Um, I still enjoy passing my knowledge on, and I enjoy being being in good shape. And uh, I think it keeps you young in, in, uh, by the hand mind as well. So, you know, when I wake up in the morning, the first thing I do, I do a five-mile run. Um, obviously, Sundays I do a bit longer. And then I go out coaching, and I, and I always I'll mentor people, where I say I'm always helpful. I'm more of a giver than a taker, and I'm mm -hmm. always trying to help people. And I've always been like that, a bit like my parents, with similar. I think um, and my kids will be similar. So it's hard to find, find good people out in the world today. We all know from, from you know, whatever field we're in, so hopefully, I'll be remembered as um, one of the givers. Yeah. And I, yeah. to do it and I enjoy it. And it's, it's, not fun, yeah. it's not all about money. It's not, you know, I'm not money, money, money. A lot of people are not money. And uh, I think that, that's been a good about the sport as well. It's never been about money. Even though money comes around, it's about being the best. You know, I always wanted to be the best in the world. You know, I, I dreamed from that day. And I live my dream. So I always say to people, you know, if you, if you believe in something, you can do it. If you've got to believe to achieve. So yeah. it, especially the message to the youngsters, you know, out there, it's not about money. It's about being the best and putting hard work and dedication into it. You can do it. Yeah, no, most definitely. And, and of course, having the support of people like yourself to guide them. Of course. Because, yeah. You know, uh, without, without your coaches, you know, we talk, talk about um, mentoring and coaching in, in martial arts. You know, no one has ever become a black belt or a great fighter without a coach and a mentor, have they? That's right. The you know, in life, parents, you still yeah. you need those people in life to become you know to help you become a good person. You know, so not a good person, a successful person, the person that can share, a person that can give back to communities, give back to other people. You know, that, you know some people have that skill naturally and that want naturally. Other people, you, you have to coach them into it and give them That's the right, tools. Yeah. Not so much yeah. coach them into it, but give them the tools to enable them to do it. Exactly right. Yeah. As, yeah. A, as a young kid, I was quite a shy kid. You know what I mean? I was. I was like. Wouldn't even speak to anyone. So that's what it shows that martial arts has brought me on. You're working in groups, 
So when these kids come up to me and they're, they're shy and stuff, I say, they're not always just the same as them and kind of bring them at the show. So that's where I think martial arts is great for young kids to work in groups. Oh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's brilliant. It's rewarding, isn't it? I, I, like yourself, you know, having retired from fighting, I love fighting. But actually, I love, I love teaching and, I, you know, I call it teaching. It's t- teaching and mentoring. You know, you yeah. get these shy kids that come in or kids with no confidence and then you see them five or six years later developing into young, young adults, young teenagers, you know, with a, with a, with a lease of life and, and a, a real sense of purpose that you can give them or help, help them with. That's right. We get the bullies coming as well. We deal with the bullies as well. The bullies yeah. become nice people as well. So it works both ways. Yeah, yeah, most definitely. Most definitely. So are you a, are you a Cobra Kai? Or uh, Miyagi Do Karate then, Cash? Cobra Kai, I don't really know what you mean by that. I've heard that's <laughs> things on the clips and tennis. The uh, kids are all watching it on Netflix at the moment. Yeah. <laughs> I've, seen all these and I've not really watched it myself. But it is, it is funny watching it because when you, when you, the Cobra Kai style, you know, some of the stuff that they say is so true. You know, and oh, really? and have you started watching it, Jackie? Have you started no, watching it yet, yeah, have you? <laughs> No, but he just talks about the old style and the old way of teaching and, you know, you get them in, you get them lined up and if they don't make the stance correct, they'll give them a whack on the back of the legs with a stick or, you know. We should just still do that. You know, that would be good discipline, but, we, you know, everything's been taken away lately. You, know, you cannot yeah. I think martial arts is the best discipline. That's why parents bring their kids to martial arts because the discipline nowadays is not, not like it used to be. You know, schools, everything's been taken away. Yeah. So I think martial yeah. arts is, is next to the army, you know, the, 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 the armed forces. So is, yeah. that's why they bring these young kids. They say, listen, my kid's not listening, he's not doing this. So martial arts is good for discipline. Yeah, well, that's, that's generally the first thing parents say when they bring their kids in is, you know, I brought them, you know they don't, don't care. They don't really care so much about the fighting side or the self-defense. It's about giving, giving those children discipline. Some, some discipline and some grounding and some you know, the sort of integrity and, and the indomitable spirit that comes with being a martial artist. That's right, yeah. And it's well, well documented now, isn't it? That's the thing. It's well, well documented on the internet. If you type in um, into Google, you know, best sports to give my child some discipline, you know, straight away, martial arts comes up. But I'm surprised then, it's not, they're not going into the schools yet. No, but yeah, but I suppose then on yeah. the other side of it, I, you've I, got, I think you've that got goes the ones. Back to the, sorry, that, that goes back not into schools, to the uh, collaboration and organisation, doesn't it? Because yeah. and the ability for uh, struggling to work really work united together in a, in a, a more joined up way. It's a lot better yeah, than it agreed. was. But it's still, agreed, yeah. keep moving it's still forward. a little bit fragmented. Yeah, still always always room for improvement. That's for sure. I think what they're saying. So, now, so Cash, we're, we're good. Yeah. I think if they say kids aren't active, it's a way of keeping active. I think you got to put a bit of fun element in, hopping, skipping, jumping. Put a few kicks, put a few movements, put a few like jump burpees and all that kind of thing. And that way, it's a good way to work out for the kids as well. It's a fun element. I try and put a lot of fun elements into the kids because kids get bored and kids don't know hard work. Yeah, yeah, definitely. You got, yeah, you got, you got to disguise the hard work, haven't you? That's right. Yeah. Disguise repetition. I mean, we um we work with uh, skills um in the US um with their UK UK partners, catch and, and basically it's that they exactly what you're saying that they, they deliver programs um, for children, which is a way it's basically child development. It's child yeah. development through martial arts, you know, giving you all the drills and the skills and the different combinations and the, the balance and the teamwork exercises all, all packaged up. It's really, it's a, it's a really good program. Isn't it, Jack? Well, just remember with a name like Gil, you never need the skill. <laughs> <laughs> well, mate, that's it. You see too easy. <laughs> there you go. Rhyme all the time. <laughs> <laughs> so, 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 so looking, we're gonna we're gonna wrap up in a second. So, hang on, Gav, I'm gonna finish this one. Off. Oh, we're gonna wrap on. up in a second, Gav. But w- one question that we always ask: What advice would you give now to a younger self, given what you've achieved and where you are in, in your life? Um, I'd say to myself, I would say, if I was me as a young self, I'd say, you know what? Keep work hard, dedicate yourself, never give up. Just keep keep at it. And you know what? If you keep believing in yourself like that, you don't matter who believes in you, you gotta believe in yourself. Yeah, that's that's my mind trait to the top. That is to keep okay, keep at it. Brilliant. No sound, definitely sound advice. I think. That. Sure. Advice. Yeah. yeah. Cash, it's been an absolute pleasure having you on this morning. Really, really appreciate you taking the time out to talk to us. No, it's been good. I'm glad. I, same, I didn't do it a while ago, but you know what? I didn't have time. But 
but you've been really good. No, that's fine. And we've got, you know, lots of people want to get on. Some we've got to bully on. Some we've got to you know, like keep chasing them. Yeah. But, um, you know, we, we want to be doing this for the next three years. And there's fantastic. enough martial artists out there yeah, with fantastic stories and inspirational stories just like yours. Yeah, I think the yeah. public and martial artists around the world really want to hear. So, again, thank you very much. Listen, guys, keep up the good work. It's a great, great thing you're doing. Yeah, thank you, Cash. Yes. Yeah. Cheers, Cash. Thanks Have very much. Have a great day. Take care, man. Have a good day. Take care. Bye-bye. 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 Well, guys, I hope you enjoyed this week's episode. Don't forget to like our Facebook page and our Facebook group, The Motivated Martial Artist Podcast. Or check us out on Instagram, The Motivated Martial Artists. Where you'll see much more content and early insight into some of the interviews and some of the guests and some of the conversations around the things that we're discussing. Hope to see you all next week. Bye for now. Bye.